Today we're going to talk about bone breaks below the 650 grain bone breaking threshold. I've had some nitwits who can't read uh, keep challenging me on this. What do you mean they're breaking bones below 650? I thought you said that. <laughs> Reading is fun. Stay tuned. good things about some of the dumb comments on YouTube or Facebook attacks is uh, it creates video and it creates uh, topics to discuss and clarify. So in this particular instance, there's a group of knuckleheads out there who chip away at Dr. Ed's Natal study and try to pick little pieces out. And what, they, what they're doing is they're trying to justify a point they're making and then they jump over what's written clearly in the study. A couple of three or four nitwits who uh, purport to be experts in the world of everything arrows were jumping on me this year because I kept posting pictures of arrows between 520 and 650 grains, which is known as the bone breaking threshold heavily studied by Dr. Ed in the Natal study, which is available at the Ashby Bowhunting Foundation website. The comments were this. Hey man, I thought you couldn't break bone below 650 grain. What's up with that? Now, these individuals claim to have read the whole Natal study. They claim to understand every bit about it. And they claim to be rewriting what Ed did. In other words, any little thing that they can detract from Ed's study, they are attempting to first set up an idea and then reverse engineer the proof. I'm going to read from the 2008 update, part one. It is the primary data here is in page on page two, paragraph two. But before we do that, which is reading, like these guys didn't read, they did read, they just lied to you and skipped over this part. This is a discussion in the 2008 update about the heavy bone threshold. But I need to establish a couple of terms in here because if I start talking and you don't know what the terms mean, you might get a little bit lost. So the heavy bone threshold, I'm reading right from the study right there. The heavy bone threshold represents a point of arrow mass where there is an abrupt increase in the frequency, okay, hang on to that word for a second, of breaching bone. All broadheads tested, all types exhibit this sudden increase in the rate of heavy bone penetration. The heavy bone threshold is, as Ed says, around 650 grains. There's no way to exactly quantify it, but 650 is a pretty solid number, and then up from there. So it is the minimum standard, it is the threshold for an abrupt increase, all broads had tested, all types to breach bone. So that is the heavy bone threshold. Moving on to paragraph two, page two, 2008 update, part one, okay? If you want to know exactly where it's at and exactly where these bozos skipped over the top of it, I'm gonna read directly from Dr. Ed's writing. Assuming a structurally intact arrow. This is key. Can't bend, can't break. You can't have the blades fly off, okay? The nose can't bend, okay? Inserts can't bend. So assuming the arrow is structurally intact, which is the first Ashby rule, structural integrity. At threshold mass, so at 650 grains. 
A broad head having a low mechanical advantage. So mechanical advantage is the steepness of the blades. Also multiple blades. If you have a lot of blades, your mechanical advantage goes down. They might show a jump in the bone breaching rate from 15% to 25% or so. So we have a 650-ish grain arrow, doesn't explode, doesn't break, doesn't bend, but an inefficient broadhead platform still might show an increase in bone breaching from 15 to 25%. The bone breaching rate for a moderate MA broadhead, mechanical advantage, so let's say you were here and it's a fixed blade and then you went to something that was a little longer and narrower, right? Might change from 35% to 60% or more. Again, at 650 grains, at the threshold. At threshold arrow mass, the bone breaching rate for a high MA broadhead. This is the shape of the broadhead he's talking about. He modified the Grizzly. That's the tough head, long, narrow, sleek, no lumps or bumps, and a high MA. So at threshold arrow mass, the bone breaching rate for a high MA broadhead with sleek profile, smooth ferrule fade in, typically jumps from a below threshold, so below 650 grain rate, near 50%, to a full 100% bone breaching rate. Bone breaching rate was 50% shooting that broadhead, but let's say it was a 600 grain arrow. It's below threshold and it was still 50%. But when you added the mass to 650, didn't bend, didn't break. High mechanical advantage, 100%. Some non-production experimental broadheads having very high MA, which means narrowed even further than that. So they're really long and narrow such as the modified Grizzly or Grizzly Extreme, show below threshold breaching rates above 50%, so below 650 grains, but increased bone breaching rates. But no broadhead tested has approached a 100% heavy bone breaching rate on arrows below threshold mass. So I'm going to jump in the middle here and make a clarification point. And even Ed will tell you this. Got the shadows on my face because I turned my quality light off. Look at that thing. Brandon McDonald, you'd be proud of me. That's my other light for keeping the wrinkles out of my face, but I don't care. Uh, you can talk to Ed himself. And Ed will clearly tell you the 12th factor is 650 grains. Because until you hit bone... It's the least important factor. Perfect arrow flight, structural integrity, sharp broadheads, type of edge bevel, that kind of stuff, really comes into play for maximum killing power and putting them on the ground in a hurry. But when bone is introduced, it jumps up to number three or four. So it actually moves around, which is crazy. But if you don't hit bones, then you don't need it. But if you do and plan B happens, you're gonna wish you had it. What you have to understand here is it's a combination of things. It's like an algorithm and increase the chances that it's going to break the bone. We've seen it done with mechanicals. There's been a couple of people who, you know, posted pictures with their mechanical broadhead and broke a bone. Yeah, got it. I mean, they hit the exact perfect spot or the animal was loaded correctly and it occurs. Got that. But if you just go to the 2008 update... Ashby Boning Foundation, 2008 update, part one, page two, paragraph two. It will explain how this stuff occurs because it studied it. And the tendency of your mass of the projectile to increase that bone breaching possibility is right there in the literature. You're, the fact that you might break a bone below 650 grains even Ed said it. <laughs> I mean, how do, you, how do you get past the fact that in the literature, it's written clearly that you, it's possible to break bones and you can actually increase the bone breaking frequency. But people who say, you know, put their feet down and say, I thought y'all said it's got to be 650. And I've read the whole Natal study. So I know all about there is, and I've never seen anything about it. It's mind boggling. 
It's truly mind boggling. If you like this content, I suggest you go to one of my playlists. Three that I might suggest. The quartering two shot series. My study of long range arrow performance, which is a study of energy and speed and everything as the arrow goes down range. And then also look at my high FOC arrow building playlist. It's got all got great information. And to get you started on this crazy journey, start digging a hole, looking for a shovel. And when you get to that shovel, your efficiency in the bow hunting world and on me performance will skyrocket. For those of you who this is like new information to you, please go read the study. Actually, this particular update's super, you know, interesting. All of it is. But this one's interesting because it, it talks about breaking bone, which everybody says you really can't do with a bow and arrow. It's all shot placement. Animals never move. You've never made a mistake. You never pulled a shot. The wind's never blown. And uh, you never misjudge yardage. So if you can do all of those things and never miss, yeah, everything works. But there's a lot of bones in the way. God designed stuff as a superstructure. And like, the whole lethal part has a lot of bones and big meat, stuff like that in the way to keep stuff from dying. I, just, I was surprised by this comment. A couple of the knuckleheads out there, they write papers and they do, they do some theoretical deep research. Generally speaking, they try to, they decide what the outcome is going to be and then they try to prove it going backwards. decide the outcome and then as they approach something that really is clearly thrown in the face of their uh, study and they haven't done any research on animals they haven't tried to repeat ed's study they haven't spent all the time he did over multiple decades trying to figure this stuff out they haven't done any of that so anecdotally they're going to try to figure out their outcome okay and then they start with a premise and then they just navigate and they find anything they can. And whenever they run into something that's conflicting to what they are trying to prove, you just go around that and leave that behind. Act like it doesn't exist. Well, it exists. <laughs> uh, in the description, there will be a link to the 2008 update, part one. I've said it before, I'm saying it again. Page two, paragraph two super awesome all aero platforms no all broadhead designs assuming they don't explode at the 650 grain threshold showed an increasing rate of bone breaching but it may be from 10 percent to 20 it may be from you know 35 to 60 and then if you go for the one pump pump super adult broadheads you're starting to approach 100 percent it's right there Reading is fun. Hey, this is the Ranch Fair. If you like this stuff, hit subscribe, thumbs up. If you don't want to subscribe, I don't care. But, uh, you know, you might learn something. That's kind of my goal. I said earlier, I'm getting old and I really like fishing. And uh, I like the science part of bow hunting. And I like the science part, just kind of how my head works. And um, I'm going to keep doing this stuff and posting it. But I would love to see your success. Um, and by the way, if you all have kills and breaking bones, doesn't have to be dramatic, send your pictures to me on Instagram at the Ranch Ferry, and I'll put them on my Instagram because I enjoy nothing more than seeing success in the field. I'm getting old, and I, I'm really not that crazy about I like the science stuff, and I'm, I like to bow hunt, but I'm not as mad about Adam as I used to be. But it's really rewarding for me to see people's success and then I'm able to help your life be better. And I know Dr. Ed appreciates it as well. So if you shoot stuff, send me pictures. I'll post it on my Instagram. I'd like to hear your stories. There's nothing more rewarding when we see people having a very efficient shot and recovery. That's the goal. Maximum lethality. There's no other channel on YouTube and very few organizations talking about maximizing lethality as the single goal and trying to figure out which arrows, it's already been done because Ed did the study, but which arrows provide the most lethality in the most angles and the most hits 
on the widest variety of game. Crazy, I think that's the goal, right? Like to like shoot and get them, like recover them quick and knock them over. And if they jump around or something, you might break something that's in the way because you didn't intend to shoot there, but they moved and put a bone in the way. I mean, duh, it happens. I think I might be the only person on earth who's human. <laughs> Margin of error is part of my, you know, thought process. Like when I'm fishing, I don't catch all of them. Sometimes things go wonky. All right, well, see you later. Subscribe if you want. And, uh, hate mail, Troy at ranchray.com. Bye. Hey, so you know the whole heavy arrow thing, everybody says, well, you lose your distance uh, and it, ar it arches. Well, it's an archery, you know? Well, I just snuck up on this odd ad, bet it at, got to 25 yards, okay? With his ass to me and he wouldn't get up. So I shot him in the ass. Check this out. There's the entry on his ass. Came out. Came out his chest. Right here. Right here. Buried in the dirt or rock. I can't even find the damn thing. So, yup, 650 grains. Uh -huh.